takes us to our talk of the tape, whether the market and Fed are aligned or at odds, and how that could influence the rally in the weeks ahead. Let's ask Gabriela Santos, chief strategist for J.P. Morgan Asset Management, with me once again at Post 9. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Good to see you. How are you thinking about what might happen this week? So it is the last big week of the year, and really investors are going to be looking for that confirmation of growth without inflation and peak rates looking to the other side of rate cuts and exactly what precipitates them. We think it'll take at this point a big surprise uh, on the downside or the upside to get much movement uh, when it comes to the stock market. And that actually, if you look at bond yields, we're still a bit vulnerable because of a little bit of dichotomy between what investors are expecting for the first rate cut and what the Fed is likely to do. Okay, let's go there then, because that's sort of how we set up this conversation, whether, you know, the market and the Fed are aligned or whether they're at odds or, or offsides with yeah. one another. You think they're a little offsides? A little bit. I think, in general, the direction is clear. We've seen the last rate hike. The next move is going to be a rate cut. But I think that if you look at probabilities, there's still a 40 percent chance of a rate cut in March. I think unless you have a big actual economic slowdown, we're unlikely to see that, even though we actually think inflation will come down faster than the Fed is expecting. So it's really just talking about pushing it back a few months, expecting the first rate cut to happen in June or July. So, so it's nothing dramatic. You're expecting cuts, though. In 24. We do expect cuts. So it's nothing dramatically offsides. It's just in the very short term, you could see a pop in yields as those uh, rate cut expectations are adjusted a little bit more in line with the Fed. Are they cuts because they can or cuts because they have to? So in our base case, we continue seeing growth without inflation, which is what the jobs data confirmed last week. And we hope to see also in the CPI and retail sales this week. Um, so in that environment, rate cuts by mid-year really are because they can, because inflation is coming down faster than they expect. And that opens the door to start actually lowering nominal rates so that real rates don't increase much, much more from here. Do I make the leap and then say that you must be bullish stocks for 2024? I think the number one conclusion for us is a lot of investors are frustrated with the markets this year because they sat on too much cash. And despite all the ups and downs, the 60-40 still gave you 3x cash this year. It'll get even worse next year, given that we think the peak benefit of cash is behind us. So mm. that's the number one thing to do. Use the popping yields when they happen to extend duration a little bit. Use pullbacks in the market to actually lean in to some of the laggards where it makes sense. You okay. don't want to go too on the other extreme of risk. Either. Okay, so you're talking about a rotation from cash into the lagging sectors of the market, the ones that really didn't wake up until you know the beginning of November. Yes, and I think it, it's... It's a very fast-changing market. We went very quickly late October to how high can rates go when it's a very concentrated, narrow leadership, all of a sudden to how low can rates go mm -hmm. and an everything rally. So you don't want to be participating on either of those extremes. You do want to diversify exposure, uh, but you don't want to lean into, for example, for us, not quite the time yet for small caps or oh, why not? financials or so retail why not quite small yet. small caps? Because, like, you know, the Russell's this area, it's, Russell's up almost 11% percent in a month. Yeah. So if, you know, you think there's going to be a broadening out and the economy is going to hang in there, the Fed cuts because they can, not because they have to, why wouldn't I want small caps? So I think we do still want some allocation of small caps and you still have valuation discounts, historically large versus large caps. So building some exposure. But if it's about overweights, that marginal dollar, we would still prefer quality large caps. And that's because a soft landing still doesn't mean things are great. And I think the discussion for next year is going to be a lot more where are we in the cycle? Where do you see pressures late cycle? And that tends to be small cap. Small caps also have a lot more floating rate debt. So they are already feeling the pinch mm. of higher rates. And the Fed is unlikely to cut it fast enough uh, to ease that pain uh, in the immediate future. But it's fair to say you're a believer.